Lynn Hiles Ministries presents Dr. Lynn Hiles, That You Might Have Life. And here's your host, Dr. Lynn Hiles. We want to welcome you to the program today. We are on location. You probably notice that the set is different than our normal TV studios because we are on set in Irving, Texas at Calvary Church where uh, Pastor Ben Daly is the lead pastor. And uh, I'm just really, really excited to have him on as a guest today. We've become great friends over the last several years. But we're going to share some things concerning his ministry and a few books he's written that I think are powerful that you need to get a hold of. But just to give you a little bit of the story of the background of how we met in my 40th year of full-time traveling ministry, I kind of went through a little bit of discouragement, feeling like, well, things are changing so much. And, and uh, you know, uh, a lot of times you'll, you'll be doing ministry and people will be maybe not writing you or letting you know that they're listening. I'm wondering, I, and I, I'm wondering, am I affecting anybody? Mm. And uh, I went to, I felt like the Lord spoke to me to go to a conference in Oklahoma City. It's one of the first conferences I've been to in years where I wasn't a speaker, but I felt the Lord spoke to me. It's not that I wouldn't go. It's just that I just didn't have time. But I went to this meeting and, and Pastor Ben Daly was preaching this morning and I leaned over and told my pastor friend I was sitting beside of Pastor Paul Brown back as a matter of fact, I'll just give him a little shout out. And uh, I said to him, now this guy right here is saying something. <laughs> and he said, well, he wants to meet you. He listens to you some. And of course, I had no idea the caliber of ministry the man had. But when I walked up to him, I, 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 he, he just looked at me and began to weep. And he said, before I even shake your hand, dude, I need to tell you, man, you just, you've transformed my life with your ministry. And uh, we just connected over that. And we've been coming to the Dallas Metroplex ever since and been part of their great ministry here. And I want him to share his story in just a few moments. But I want to tell you, first of all, who he is. And it is an honor to have you on, mm -hmm. Pastor Ben. It really is. And I'm excited for the people to really get to know you and to be able to reach out to him. If there's anybody in the Dallas Metroplex area, you owe it to yourself to visit this great church here in this area. We've been coming into this area for some time and have been preaching here this weekend. But Ben Daly is the lead pastor of the Calvary Church. It's a multi-locational uh, church based in the dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. He is known for his love for the gospel, his creative style of communication, and non-conventional ministry. He oversees one of the most culturally diverse congregations in the nation. His unique ministry approach paired with his love for people have introduced an atmosphere for heart transformation. And it is a great privilege to have you on. Wow. Uh, and, and let me say this as well, because this is not on the back of your book, but he's also uh, has something called the Gospel Circle uh, Fellowship of Churches that is really equipping pastors and leaders to be able to make a transition into the gospel of grace. And we're going to talk about his book, Captured by Grace, in a few moments. Yes. But I want you, first of all, just to take the time you want and just share your personal story about you and, and your journey. So just, just make yourself at home. Welcome. Well, I appreciate you uh, for allowing me to be on your program. And I want to shake your hand <laughs> and I want to honor you. This is such a great joy. Um, you have been such a tremendous uh, gift to not only me, but to, to the leaders here at Calvary Church uh, and to our uh, church family and churches. You have a relationship now with all of our location pastors and, and they love you. And uh, I tell you, you have been a tremendous gift uh, in, in, in our lives. Uh, and you do fit in, in my story. I'll tell you a little bit about me. I don't want to take a long time. I don't know how far take, back you want to take go, your time. but, uh, I am the oldest son of, uh, Dr. Tim and Lori Daly. Uh, my parents currently oversee a network of churches currently in 30 locations, seven countries and growing. My mom and dad have recently moved their uh, headquarters uh, back here in, in the States. Um, there are six daily boys. I'm the oldest, so you've got Ben, you've got uh, Aaron, you've got Isaac, you've got Caleb, you've got Micah, you've got Josh, 
and uh, all of the Daly boys are married with with children. Um, and uh, I tell you, uh, I'm I'm so uh, proud of my brothers. They pastor, you know, in uh, different states around the U.S. and and uh, from California to Arizona, and uh, they are just great guys. Uh, and then I met my uh, best friend and my wife, <clears throat> who uh, you know, and she loves you. My whole family loves you. But I met my wife, Kim, actually in high school. We dated for uh, three years, and then we were engaged one year. And then can you believe I wound up marrying my high school sweetheart? We were 19 years old, and uh, we left California to go to Bible school, uh, actually in Texas. And uh, during Bible school, uh, I became an intern for a man by the name of Dr. Jadon George, Pastor Jadon George. He pastored, um, at that time it was called Calvary Temple. It's now Calvary Church. But Kim and I spent seven years uh, on staff at Calvary. And then in 2000, we left Texas uh, and we returned to California to do some church planting. And uh, those were incredible years. And seven years later, uh, Dr. Jadon George actually asked us to return to Texas. So in 2007, 2008, we returned to Texas, back to Calvary uh, Church. And it's hard to believe, uh, Dr. Lynn, that uh, over the past 15 years, you know, I can sit here and talk about the many transitions and changes and succession and now Calvary uh, Church being a what's called a multi-locational church. We have churches uh, in many different locations and growing. Yeah. Uh, I followed a man who pastored the same church for 45 years. And uh, I've had the privilege now of, of uh, authoring uh, three books. As you said a moment ago, I have the privilege of overseeing now a network of churches and ministries called GCCM. That's Gospel Circle of Churches and Ministries. We've reached, we recently launched uh, uh, what's called Gospel Institute, which is available to everybody watching. And I want to say that because you are one of our major, our main uh, instructors, not only for year one, but now we're launching year two. And you've done some great uh, uh, classes for the Institute uh, there. Uh, but I want to say this, I could talk about all this stuff, but my major wins, my major wins, my marriage, uh, I get to do ministry with my very best friend, uh, my wife, Kim, my family, um, my kids, you know, uh, you know, as well as I do, uh, you know, preachers, kids, they're different kids. And, you know, I get to do ministry with my daughter and uh, and her incredible son, my son in love. I get to do ministry with my son who oversees our television and creative and God's really raising him up. And and uh, and now recently I had a Christmas miracle. He got engaged to a beautiful girl in the church. But here's what's awesome. My kids love Dr. Lynn Howes. You I know, preacher's kids. kids yeah. You know, I don't know. They, they don't like everybody. That's true. <laughs> but they love Dr. Lynn Howes. And then uh, a major win, I would say, is the journey that I've been on, my personal grace walk. And I want to say that, uh, and, and maybe we'll talk a little bit about it, but when 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 I came into, uh, I guess I would say, began my eyes opening to a revelation of this new covenant that we get to live and enjoy. It's as you say, the gospel truly gives you your life back and you get to live again. I'll tell you. I was on a search looking for someone who could teach me the new language, the new covenant. The new covenant is the new language. Yeah. We have to learn the new sentence yeah. structure of this message. And I didn't know, who do I go to? What do I do? And Because uh, it's a different message. Yeah. And um, I remember someone telling me, there's a guy 
you've got to check out. His name is Lynn Howes. Have you heard of him? I said, no. He says, he's got some television programs and he's got, you know, some YouTube programs and he's got content out there. And it sounds like you're saying what he's saying. You need to check it out. And I can't tell you what it meant. You were a distant mentor to me. And um, you really, God used you to help uh, learn this new language. And that's why I'm so grateful today. And I really feel like those of you that are watching, you know, if this ministry has uh, really been impacting you and your life and, uh, and, and the way you're now enjoying life and living, man, let this guy know. It's always good to know. Yeah that uh, what you're doing is is making a difference. And uh, what a gift, man, God's given me to be able to now be in relationship with you. And not only your television ministry, but your your resources, your books and material that, that you work so hard to, to make available to so many uh, around the, the world now. And uh, so, man, that's a little bit about me. I don't know. Maybe well, that was too much. You no, know, no. I want you to keep talking. But the thing that, you know, was so encouraging when I when we, we met is I walked down there. Like I said, I was in my 40th year of ministry. And I'm thinking, you know, I've got 40 years on the road. And I thought maybe I'm becoming a dinosaur. It's time to maybe maybe I'm time for me to retire. You know, you wonder how many, you know, uh, people you're affecting. And, and uh, when I met you it kind of put some air back in my sails because you, when you, you reached out to me and you, you never, people were standing around you. It was a big, large conference. And I mean, pastors were so blessed by what you were saying. I mean, the room was full of just weary, tired people who've been on this treadmill of religion. And when I walked up to you and you saw me, you, yep. you know, people were getting your card and you saw me. I, I didn't even know you'd even know who I was. <laughs> I was sitting in the congregation. You didn't even know I was there. And you just begin to weep and said, dude, before I shake your hand, I want to thank you, man. You saved my life, saved my ministry and uh, our marriage. Everything's been better because of it. Your wife jumped up and said, he's not blowing smoke. He's telling you the truth. <laughs> That's and right. It puts some air back in my seat. Wow. And, you know, because, you know, I don't care who you are. Somebody needs to encourage you once in a while that you really are right. effective. And when I came here, I had no idea. The, I had no idea the size of your ministry because I go to big and small. But when I saw Calvary, but the thing that was that, I mean, it was so celebrated when I came. I thought I told you the first time I came, I said, you know, I've been hated so long. I don't know how to be celebrated. <laughs> and it's really, you know, it was just such a refreshing and it truly put some air back in my sails. And I thought wow. I was thinking about retiring. I thought maybe I shouldn't retire yet. Maybe I've been a little more effective than I than I thought I was. And and that really ministered to me and, and spoke to me and your friendship's been so valuable. And when I see, you know, the fruit of some stuff that we've, we've done over the years, I see these church, you know, the church in Wallace, North Carolina, the church in Griffith, the ones, the different locations that you have and the culture of these churches. It almost reminds me of the Queen of Sheba when she said, happy are thy servants. Wow. People serve here, not because they have to. And I mean, there's a, it's almost, it's almost contagious. There's an excitement here wow. as a result of that. And so, you know, that's, that's, that's one of the things that I really observed about your ministry. And so, you know, I, I think that's a culture that's, you know, that's incredible. So I, I want to thank you for that. So well, I'm you know. grateful that you, that, that you didn't retire. Yeah. I'm, I'm grateful because listen, in a world full of bad news and more and more bad news, I'm telling you the message of goodness. I've never been more convinced that uh, we have the message. Yeah. And I really believe, Dr. Lynn, that your voice is going to continue to uh, go uh, go out. But I think you're also uh, now used in a unique way to empower leaders yeah. uh, who are taking this, this message now to the world that you have carried and I know felt a long time you were by yourself, yeah. but there's an army of people uh, that now have the privilege of standing on your shoulders and, and continuing. So that's awesome. Well, it's kind of like, you know, when you kind of get around some other folks and you can kind of encourage one another in it and you see the momentum begin to grow. Yes. And I believe there are probably a lot of pastors and leaders out there that have come to the end of themselves. Now, you know, you've written a lot of books. And I don't know how we exactly want to to deal with some of this, but you know, that they've hit what I call a wall, Yeah. you know, and uh, they know that they've come to the end of something. Yeah. And I, I can remember years ago when I first came to that wall and, and uh, I hit this wall and it was like, you know, uh, 
Uh, I hit the swole, and it's like it, I, I didn't want to tell people that this, 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 this something's wrong. There's got to be more, but I don't know what it is. And and so, you know, it was almost like I hit the swole. And, and the Lord took me to the Song of Solomon, and he said that, uh, you know, he said, I, I brought you to the secret place of the stairs. And I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, well, you know, every, I thought I'd come to a wall, but if you look at a set of steps, every step has a, a step and a riser, step and a riser. And uh, what, what I had done is, you know, I'd anointed the wall with oil. I'd rebuked the wall. I marched around the wall seven times, tried to run through a troop leap over this. It was a spiritual wall. And the Lord said to me one day, and I could just picture myself almost like coming to this wall and putting my fingers on the top of it and just stretching and pulling it up. And I looked up on his glory for as far as I could see. And the Lord says, I've not brought you to a wall, I brought you to a step. <laughs> and the wall, you've come to the end wow. of something, but it's the wow. secret place of the stairs. You've come to a place where you're about to say it. So what, you know, what would you say to leaders who've come to that place? And I have to say that I admire your guts, sir, mm. your courage, pastoring literally a mega church. There's no, I mean, that's just no two ways about it. If you ever meet it, it's a mega church and to pastor it, but to have the guts to be able to shift from maybe the traditional thing. And what would you say to, to leaders that are a little bit afraid to do that? Or what, what, what would you say? What would, talk about your story a little bit that way. Yeah. I, I, I think, uh, I, I think to understand that, um, you know, the, the, the first book that, uh, that I released uh, in 2012 is called Collide, When Your Desires Meet God's Heart, you know, and uh, I, I'm, I'm going to talk about the collision. It's the collision yeah. that you're talking about yeah. uh, that uh, that I came to, um, you know, to, to some degree, uh, all of us have faulty assumptions about about uh, God, about our life. Uh, we want it all. Uh, we live in a culture that thinks, you know, we deserve it all. But then sooner or later, uh, we get a wake up call and here's how I say it. Our desires collide with God's heart. Mm -hmm. And it's in that moment that we realize that his purposes and his plans are bigger and better than anything we, uh, ever dreamed. And when a collision, uh, occurs, uh, we realize in that moment that we have been, you know, wrong about many things. Yeah. We've been wrong about some ideas about God, ourselves, uh, our circumstance. And at that moment, when that collision occurs, we have a choice. Are we going to shake our fist at God or man, are we going to cling to him like never before? And here's the good news. The good news is God doesn't cause collisions, but thank God he can use them for our good. Yeah. You know, I thought about this. The truth is we cause, I know we don't want to talk about it, but we cause most of our collisions. That's the truth. And uh, other people may cause them. Uh, the devil may cause them. It really doesn't matter who causes them. Regardless of the source, God wants to use them for good, to direct us, to correct us, to perfect us. Look at Anybody can bring good out of good, but only God knows how to bring good out of bad. Yeah. And so collisions, this book collide, because some of you right now are dealing with some collisions That's in your exactly life. Right. We're living in a world full of all kinds of collisions. Yes, sir. And let me tell you something. Uh, co collisions, if we can get a hold of this church, collisions are not the end. It's what you just said. Yeah. It's the beginning yeah. of, of something brand new. So let me get to where uh, you asked me that question. In my book, Collide, I talk about all kinds of collisions. I show you how to respond to collisions in every aspect of life. There's collisions in our marriage right now, parenting, work, church, leadership. And I know we like to say covid has caused all our problems, but the reality is I don't think it's caused much. COVID has only uncovered pre-existing conditions. There you go. In a lot of different areas of our life. Yeah. Uh, in our marriages, in our parenting, emotions, health, church, leadership, all kinds of stuff. So here's what's funny, Dr. Lynn. Three months, this book releases September of 2012. Three months after the release of Collide, I have one of the big, biggest collisions in my life, the end of 2012. So I write a book called Collide, and then I have a collision. My wife said, why couldn't you have written a book on prosperity? <laughs> 
But here's what I say. Here, here was my collision. It was my innate desire to impress God with my goodness that collided with his desire to impress me with his goodness. Wow. And I tell you, I came to the end, but I love how you said it. It, it wasn't the end. What'd you call it? I called it the riser on a step, the secret place of the stair. Wow. This is a word for some folks. Yeah, today. I believe it is. Yeah. This is a word for yes, some sir. folks today who feel like their collision is the end. Yeah. Wow. And that's what happened to me in, in, in my life. I, I came to the end. The fact is I sat at a table at lunch one Sunday afternoon with a group of our staff. And I said, I'm done. I cannot carry another thing. And you know, religion makes you stupid. Uh -huh. So someone at the table said, now don't forget, pastor, you said you can't carry another thing. I had tears running down my face. I said, I cannot carry another thing. And someone said, well, don't forget now you got to carry your cross. And here's what I said at the table. I said, if I have to carry another cross, then you tell me what was his cross for. Think about it. Think about it. That question, Dr. Lynn, is what really, I mean, threw me into a, 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 a search for an answer. Yeah. What? What is the significance of that cross? Because I'm offering people joy that I don't know anything about, peace that I don't know anything about, life that I don't know anything about. Our church was growing 30, 35% a year, and I'm done. Yeah. I can't continue. I can't perform anymore for the people. I can't perform anymore for God. I'm done. And I literally wrote my resignation. And here's what's crazy. I wrote my resignation, and when I did, it was as if God finally said, thank you. <laughs> he said, thank you for taking your grip off of something that was never yours in the first place. Oh, that's powerful. Okay, so four years later, I released my book, Limitless, The Life You Were Meant to Live. And this is a book that I never planned to write. It is a message that I didn't even know I needed to hear. I had been a Christian for decades. This is the point. By any normal standards, I was a deeply committed Christian. I was a pastor's kid. A hugely successful according to all standards. Even. Well, you know, if you're if you're looking at those metrics. Yeah. But I'll tell you, the metrics are changing now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I was misguided. And for many years, I was focused on what I needed to do for God, what I needed to do for God. And I worked hard and I did my very best and I poured out my life to serve him, but it became a grinding duty with no beauty. And I cannot pinpoint the season it happened, but the Christian life, and nobody teaches it better than you, the Christian life became more about my performance and my accomplishments for God rather than about his love for me. That little word for almost killed me. Yeah. What are you going to do for God? Yeah. If it's about what you're going to do for God, then you're never going to feel like you do much. Yeah. And when I lost the focus of your message, God's grace. Yeah. When I lost the focus, I lost my joy. Listen, there's some of you watching right now. You've lost the focus and you wonder, why have I lost my joy? I've lost my strength. I've lost my delight. I have lost my security. And many people right there, they are striving just like that in their own efforts. That's where I was rather than thriving in God's grace. So my book, Limitless, really is that message. It will transform the way you look at God's grace and empower you to live a free and a full life, the life that you were meant to live. And we can talk about uh, captured by grace, but uh, but I don't think we have time. Well, we got plenty of programs. We're going to have you on again next week. I get to come back? Yes, you do for several weeks. Oh, we're going my to goodness. And just enjoy. I think it's so necessary because I think so many people have come to the place. Yeah. You know, as I listen to your story, it's a lot like mine, even family-wise. You, you've got six uh, in your family. There's seven siblings. You know, there's six, seven of us. And I have six other siblings. But, you know, I, I believe there are people that are listening today that are tired and weary. Talk about it. They're burned out. You know, Matthew 11 said, are you tired? Are you weary? Are you burned out on religion? Talk about it. Walk with me. Work with me. See how I do it. And he said, I'll teach you the unforced rhythm of grace. 
And, uh, you know, I, I, I've got so I, I've been enjoying the journey. You know, I, I, you know, I, I, I said this this morning in the service. I said, if heaven is like where you go to church at, do you really want to go there? <laughs> Just a thought. I don't tell you people, you don't like my thoughts, have some of your own, you know. But we, what we've done is we've made religion something that's become a thief to our lives. But really, the real gospel gives you back your life. Because Jesus didn't say, I came to give you a ticket to heaven and to get out of hell. For Come on. He said, I came to give you a life and that more abundantly. And that's what we call this program that you might have life, is that he came to give us back our life. And the gospel is really not about just how I can get from here to there. And I do believe there's a there, but it's about how I can get what's happening there to operate here. Say it. And, uh, you know, because the scripture says that because of the abundance of grace and the gift, the gift of righteousness, here's the kingdom word, we can reign in life by one Christ Jesus. And I think we're going to come back and talk about some of this stuff as you, as we talk about your book, uh, Captured by Grace, a powerful book. I just finished reading it back, uh, through the fall and decided I wanted to have you on because of that. And, and just talk about, we're going to talk about, uh, post-traumatic religious stress disorder, which has a term <laughs> that you have, uh, kind of, you know, coined the phrase for. And I, it'll be such a blessing for you. Make, make sure you take time, uh, to set your DVR or to watch these because we also archive them on YouTube. If you miss any of these programs, you can go back. There's a link uh, on our website. The website's on the screen. And if you just go to our website in the upper right-hand corner, there's direct links to our YouTube channel. There's a direct link to our podcast. Pastor Ben will be the audio portions of this will be on our podcast, on our YouTube channel. They're archived there. Share them with your friends. Share them on Facebook. There's an RSS feed for your Android device. But we want you to, to just tune in again next week because I think this, tell your pastor to tune in. If he's struggling if he's worried, this is the most difficult time in the world, probably, to pastor. Yeah. And I think you'll be blessed by this. But let me just say, take a few moments, if you would, to call the number on that screen and uh, sow an offering into or yeah. seed into the ministry to help us just to, to be able to take the gospel around the world. There's also a scan code where you could just take your phone and scan that mm -hmm. code. It'll take you directly to the link where you can give with the scan code on your uh, thing. There, there would be a place also you can order his books and all of those kinds of things. You can write a check or uh, money order, send it to the address that will come on the screen. And we appreciate you taking the moment to be able to do that. We do need your help. God bless you and thank you for joining us again this week on the program. And don't forget to write and tune in next week. God bless you. I am excited to announce the release of my latest book titled The Great I Am. In this book, we will explore the seven times in the Gospel of John that Jesus says, I am. When he uses that phrase, it is always in contrast to something from the Old Covenant. For instance, they thought Moses and the law was the door into the sheepfold, but Jesus said to them, I am the door. They thought that Israel was the true vine, but Jesus said to them, I am the vine, you are the branches. As you read the pages of this book, you will discover that Jesus removed the covenant of death and replaced it with the covenant of life. Get your copy of the book, The Great I Am, today.